Welcome everybody to 12 Threes uh, session number 20.16 or 15. Uh, maybe it's 16. I'm working out the numbers. We're going to talk about Zoho projects today. It's kind of a high level discussion. Project management is a profession. You can be a certified project manager. Uh, and you can spend weeks, months, and maybe even years learning how to manage projects and to do it. So we can't cover it in 35 minutes. Zoho Projects is a pretty full-featured project management tool. It integrates with the other Zoho apps. We're going to talk about the basics and how it works with CRM and how to set it up. And uh, Kate wants to share her screen. Uh, excuse me, Kate, I'm going to say no. I'm going to start sharing. And uh, we will go into our demo system here. First thing I'm going to cover is just how to set it up. So this is a little two-user demo system Zoho gives us. Uh, you can see we're called Demo 1.12.3. And I have turned on projects for myself. I'm in my apps. Zoho Projects looks like a giant check mark. Um, but I haven't turned it on for my other people. So I'm just going to really quickly remind you that if, if you don't see an app, it's because it hasn't been given to you or it hasn't been turned on. Um, so you want to, if you're the admin, you can go in and add the app to Zoho One. You go into the admin panel, if you have admin rights. And under applications are all the applications you've turned on. Zoho Projects is down here. It's been turned on. It only has one user, which is me. So I want to go into projects. I want to assign users, and I give it to the people who I think should be using Zoho projects. And this is a two-user system, so I'll give it to everybody being number two here. Uh, you then have to pick a role. It's just uh, how much authority you want to give them within projects, and we'll make uh, them a, uh, a manager. So you can uh, comes with some standard roles, plus you can build your own special roles. You might want a guy who can only see it and not change it, or they can only change certain things, or they can add documents, but they can't delete documents. So you can get very fine. I probably won't go into all that, but there is a whole very rich security layer. We'll make user number two here uh, a manager, and we'll give them uh, a manager profile. The role is what they can see. If you don't want them to see all projects, you can just limit them to their own or they can belong to a group. Um, and then the profile is what rights they have. So I just want to turn this on for them. We're not even going to use it as them, but you, uh, if you go to do projects after this session, you say, hey, I don't even see it. Well, this is how you see it. Your admin's got to turn it on, and then he's got to give it to the people who need to see it. When they do that, your users will log into their uh, one.zoho.com, and all the apps that they have been given will be listed here. And here's projects. I'm not even going to open it yet. Next thing we have to do, you want to do part of the setup, is you want to connect it to CRM. So I already have CRM open here. I will go to the wrench. Again, I must have admin rights. And down here under Marketplace, these are where you can put in all kinds of add-on products and extensions for your CRM. And they have maybe thousands, hundreds anyway. Uh, as a rule, I would say you, you probably want to call us before you just throw something in there because uh, extensions can modify your Zoho and you just want to make sure that we think it's a good one and well-written. Some of them are paid, so you got to be careful. It's always fine to check with us. But if you go to the Zoho ones, they're always free. So I click on the Zoho ones, and we can link our CRM to all these different Zoho products. We're going to talk about all these products uh, over the next coming weeks. Today, we're talking about Zoho projects. So this is where we turn on the integration between Zoho projects and CRM. Hit manage. Um, it just wants to know which... Uh, Zoho Projects Portal, they call it, do you want to link your CRM to? Uh, also, what fields you want to sync? We'll take all the default stuff, and then we have permissions, and it looks like administrators right now are the only ones that have rights. I want to give standard users the ability to view, create, edit, and delete projects. So 
So I could turn off the delete. We'll just save that, and this will turn on the integration, and we'll we'll see it now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to an account here in our little demo system. Just pick one here, Rangoni of Florence. And over here in the related list, you should see now Zoho projects. Sometimes you see it anyway. Some Zoho systems in the past, were enabled with projects by default. You didn't have to turn them on, but it's always good to make sure it's on. So there are no projects for Rangoni of Florence here. This is an account. I can also associate a project to a contact. Uh, Christopher here is a contact at Rangoni. We'll click on his contact record and you'll see he also has a Zoho Projects list. He's also not associated with a project. So I can associate him to an existing project. I might want to add him to a project that already exists. I might want to create a brand new project with Christopher. So we'll do that. Now I'm not even in Zoho projects yet. And this is where things get really kind of complicated uh, because now you're seeing a whole new app. It's just about as rich as CRM. There's a ton to learn. We're going to go through it quickly. I'm going to check the meeting here for chat. If I have project but I'm not yet turned on integration, then turn it on. Will it automatically integrate the existing project with contacts and CRM? Uh, I don't know, AJ. That's a good question because I don't know if you added any contacts. You might have to go into the project and point to a contact in CRM. You might you might have projects with no contacts. It's common to have a project that might be just a, a project that you're working on. You know, um, and it's just you. So you don't have to have contacts in your projects, and you, the projects you created might not have contacts, in which case you'll have to add them, and you should add them in CRM. Uh, we might look at it when we're done here. Thanks for the question. So I'm going to add a, a project. Let's go over here and say new project. Um, I'm going to go through this screen a little bit. We give the project a name, and... Uh, I don't know, let's say we're building, we're putting solar panels on people's houses. That's uh, someone on the group here. So solar panels for people at home. That's just the name of the project. Now we can have a template. It's possible that you do these projects all the time. Like in the case of our solar company, we have to do the drawings, we have to do some measurements, we have to uh, get the plan signed, we have to order the materials, we have to install it, we got to check with the power company, you know, whatever the permitting and licensing does. So you might not want to start from a blank project thing every time and put in every one of those steps. You might want to have them predefined. So you can take an existing project you've done and say, I'm going to make this a template. And then every time you build a project, you just use that template, and it's like a copy. Um, of course, this is a brand new system. I just added it to the, our demo system. We have no templates. So you'll probably use templates. I can't show it to you today. Project owner is me. Could be the other guy in our two-user system. Project has a start day. I'll use today. We want to finish it. Um, I don't want to, I'll just say we'll finish November 20. You can also group your projects. So case of my construction company, I could group them into commercial and residential just to kind of keep them organized. You may have thousands of projects and um, you don't want, they all say solar panels because that's what you do. So you might want to have a project number up here. And then there's a text area for the overview. I can add the users. The users are my people, uh, internal Zoho users. And there's just two of us, so I'll add standard guy. Um, I can also add my client to the project. And this is where it gets interesting, is you can actually let your client um, be a member of the project. Your customer can actually have a website they can go to and uh, add documents, you know, sign things, um, add tasks if you let them. It all, it all goes to the permissions, but you might want to let the customer in here uh, 
Of course, if you do, you want to be careful what they can see and what they can do. But I'm going to add this guy here as a client user. I can add others as well. There might be five people at this company. I'll save it. So it's possible he just got an email uh, inviting him to join the portal. Uh, all right, so this is sample data that Zoho gave me, and they're telling me this guy's already a member of other projects using the same email address, and um, so he can't be added. Totally understood. Uh, but if I, I'm on Christopher's record, and let's just do a refresh, he could... He could still be a member of the project, just not a client user, I think. No? Well, that's awful. I'll change his email. That's the plus. I can add a project right here. Um, just quickly do start and end date. We'll actually end this uh, there. And now I'll invite him to this, and I won't get that message. Still doesn't say he's in a project. Oh, I can't believe it. All right, we're just going to leave that. I'm going to go to Zoho Projects now. Uh, maybe Rangoni. Oh, yeah, there's two projects in Rangoni now. <laughs> Both of them got added there. I couldn't add the person because he's a member. He's a client user in some other projects. Um, I've got two projects here. The milestones, tasks, and issues are zero. So now we're going to go into projects. It's taking us 10 minutes to get there. I'll open up this project. I'll click on it. So I'm actually in Zoho Projects, but it looks like I'm in CRM. I actually don't like this view. It's very similar, but I'm also going to go to Zoho One and just open projects on its own. So I've got CRM here, projects here. Same view, two different ways to get there. Um, I'm on something called a feed, which just tells me what's been going on in the system. And so Homer created this project, created that project. Um, some standard stuff got done. But this is just tells me what's going on with the projects I'm involved in. Again, there could be hundreds. But here's the solar panel job. I think I'll start here, and we'll work our way back to some other things. This job now is absolutely blank. There are no tasks, um, no work items, no issues, no tags, nothing. It's all blank. But this is the dashboard for the project. And... It's just a collection of little widgets telling me like what's going on, um, who the users are, how many tasks they have, what are what's overdue. We haven't built anything yet. So we're going to start building our project from the ground up. And I'm going to kind of just go over, you know, projects can be very, very detailed. Um, but we're going to just kind of add a couple things. Uh, the first thing, the feature I never use, but it's called a milestone. These are major milestones in the project. So we'll add two just to show you what they are. You don't have to use milestones. I often don't. But in the case of our uh, um, solar roof thing, we'll say permits and authorizations. And so uh, We'll give ourselves a week to get this done, but because you're dealing with government agencies, probably two months is better. Um, so who's responsible? And then you'll see this flag here, internal, external. You'll see this a lot, and the internal means that only the users see this. The outside customers don't see it, but if you make it external, then they will see it. It's outside your company. So, again, if you're going to allow customers into the project, there might be parts of it you don't want them to necessarily see uh, in the portal. And so you can pick, you know, this milestone. I'll, I'll make it external. They can see it. So I'll add the, this milestone. And you know, we're going to give ourselves a week to get everything. Now, and I'll add one other milestone is uh, 
go back to my milestones. I'll add one more, and we'll call it uh, construction complete. And that will start the day after, and it will go for two months. And I'm responsible for that. We'll make it internal. doesn't really matter. So a milestone is made up of tasks. I'll go back to the permits. If I go to my milestones, I've got two. We'll do the permits and authorizations, and now I'll add a task. And so the first task might be um, architectural drawings, right? I guess what I'm thinking is you want to go to the town and get a building permit, but they're going to want to see your drawings. So you got to do the drawings first. And that's... Uh, I'm sorry, that's a task list. Uh, there's a hierarchy here. Milestones are made up of task lists. A task list is a collection of tasks. The tasks themselves can have subtasks if you want to get very granular. I, I find that four levels of milestone, task list, task, and subtask to be a little confusing. So I'm not going to do a task list. I'm just going to add a task. Um, I guess I got to have a list though. So uh, um, we'll call the task list pre-construction. And then now in the task list, I can add my tasks to it. And this is where you might. This is where you kind of do everything. So you get architectural drawings. And you know, you might this might have five t tasks in it. Like you got to pick an ar architect, you got to get a schedule, you got to get an estimate, and all that stuff. So there's drawings, there's a description here. I can drop files into it. I can pick who's responsible for this. Again, we have a small system; it's always me. But I can um, I could make the customer responsible for it. I can put a start date and an end date. It's optional. It is not uh, mandatory. But, um, you know, if, if you want to use a feature called a Gantt chart where I can't do B until A is done and I can't do C until D, B is done, that's a thing called a critical path. In other words, some things I can work on in parallel, I can get, you know, these two processes going at the same time. Other times I got to do one after the other. And if the one slides, the whole thing slides. So... Hopefully we can show you that, but this is a task. And so I've got one task called architectural drawings. And then I've got, I'll add another task called a uh, building permit. And again, I've got to pick someone who's responsible for it. Um, I'll add that. And, you know, maybe just to be silly, we'll say, well, you have to have an EPA certificate, you know. So I'm just adding these tasks. Um, I'll put that here till there. So we have tasks. We've assigned them to people. These tasks are all open, um, misspelled, too. So I'm just going to go back to this project now, and let's see what it looks like. Um, I'll go to the project. I'm in the solar panel project. I go to the dashboard, and now I have three open tasks, all open, nothing closed. Uh, Homer's got some projects. One's due today. Two are open. Nothing's overdue. So I'm starting to see that some things in here as to, uh, you know, how many milestones I have, how many are closed, uh, my task projects, uh, my time, you know, starting to fill in. We'll go back to the project uh, dashboard here. Now, this is the dashboard. I'm sorry. We go to the tasks, and here's my task list. Pre-construction. Um, I have different views here. This is called the classic view. Uh, these three are open. Uh, if you use uh, other project management software like Basecamp or Trello, a lot of people like the Kanban view. So. Right now, my, my tasks are either open or closed. I could add other statuses like waiting for, you know, information or something. But I can just take this drawing and move it over here. It's closed now. Um, 
Another thing I can do with a task, just to show you, is I can work on this task. Uh, say this building permit task. Here's all this detail about building permit task. I can move the dates out. I can schedule here budget that I want. You know, we work on it for eight hours a day. Um, I can down here add subtask to the task. I never use it, but you can. I can log hours against the task. So I can go in here and say, uh, today I worked on it for three hours and 15 minutes, and um, I ate a long lunch. Uh, again, this task is either external or internal, so you might not let, want the customer to see that you ate a long lunch. But I'm starting to log time, I can log another, uh, you know, uh, I'll put an hour and 34 minutes and say, finish drawing. And you see the time is, is building up. So I'm, I'm actually tracking time. I can add documents to a task. So I come in here and attach a file. Uh, I can make this task dependent on another task. Uh, oh, it's showing me what's dependent on it. I'm sorry. Uh, there's other things I can have in here, like I can link this to Google Drive. I've had some extensions put in here, but these are other third-party meetings. I could schedule a go-to meeting or a Zoho meeting. Um, I have to turn that on here. So there's a lot of detail at a task. And if I go back to the dashboard, I should see, refresh that, I closed one. There we go. So um, if I don't like that chart, I can have this chart, what's open, what's closed. I'm just getting information about the project. And of course, if I go back to CRM and I go to, uh, the account was Rangoni. Down here under projects, you see my tasks are starting to complete. So I can see what's going on with them. Um, let me go back to chat and just see if we have any questions very quickly. Can you determine what the client can and cannot see? Some things clients can't see and other things they cannot. Yeah, I'll talk about that real quick, AJ. It's a topic in itself. I'm gonna go to projects. And just like in CRM, projects has a little wrench at the top. This is where administrators set up all of the things about projects. And what you want are portal users, client users, profiles, and roles. So portal users are internal people, clients are outside. Profiles and roles cover both. So when I go to profiles and roles, Here's my different profiles, and um, some of these profiles were built by Zoho, and they're not editable. So your question was about clients. Um, normally, I come over here to this little edit and say, edit this client, and I can't. It's canned. This is a client profile. However, I can clone it, and I'll call it a AJ's clients. And then down here, these are all the different um, modules I can give them access to. Like if I don't want them to add to the task list, I just turn that off. And if I don't want them to see the timesheet, you know, that's all turned off here, but I can say, well, they can see it. Uh, oops. Uh, just the ones that they own and they can't add it, they can't edit it, they can't delete it. So it, this is true of uh, most of the features within projects. Uh, there is a thing called owned and added. These are projects that you're on versus just seeing ones that you don't. And then there's projects that you've only added. Sometimes a project's added by somebody else and um, you're the owner of it uh, or they're the owner of a project, but they added you as a helper. Um, so I'm just going to create this. Now I have an AJ's client's uh, profile and I can edit this, so I can make changes to this later. So then um, when I go back to my project here, I'm sorry, this one, 
way down here. There's a lot of stuff here you don't see. There's three dots. And down here under users, the only user inside is Homer. I'll add another user, standard user. And then under client users, this is where I can invite you. And I don't even have to be, you know, the client. Like this is Rangoni. Um, I can go to see, there's the CRM information, they're already there. If I want to add a client user, AJ at, I forget the exact. I'll add this, and then down here I say, I want to give him AJ rights. So see, my new profile is available, and I can give you those restricted rights that I turn some things off on. Um, I'm not going to send this because an email is actually going to go to this person and say you've been invited to join here. They can actually give themselves a password and they can go into the uh, document, I mean, uh, to the project. Uh, a couple other things that are really cool is there's a documents folder. And, you know, we talked about WorkDrive. This looks a lot like WorkDrive, but it's not WorkDrive, so be careful. Um, you do have a sync with Dropbox, but this is documents, and I can just upload a document here. So I'll upload a file off my machine. A uh, picture of this. I can pick which folder I want to put it in, so I can create folders here and have drawings, financials, whatever. Um, I put a, a document up here, and should appear, so it's complete. Let's do a refresh. There's my document. Can't really see it. I can also create a new Word spreadsheet or PowerPoint. And again, um, my client and I can both be working on that spreadsheet at the same time. Kind of nice. You can, uh, just like WorkDrive, it's a version of Zoho, Sheet, Writer, and Show. Uh, you can create a document here, and you can work on it together. You don't have to email it back and forth and then worry about who's got what version. So there's a document area. I've made heavy use of this. They're also sp uh, spread up a little bit. If you have lots of them, they get organized by the type. But you can also add folders over here. I could have a new folder that says... Um, permits, and I can just upload all my permits into this folder for the document. So we have our tasks, and we, you know, we can also mark them as closed here, open. Uh, I usually have a couple other statuses, like on hold or waiting for information. In other words, I can't proceed. I have clients that say do this, but they don't quite give me enough information to, to actually do it. So. Um, I do have clients who create tasks because we've given them that right, uh, but then we go back and forth a little bit. Um, there's also a calendar as to when things are due. This is a project calendar. It's all just within this project, but if you want, there's a, you know, I can go back years or months here if it's a really long project. Um, I have my documents, I have my milestones. Uh, you know, in order to achieve a milestone, you have to close all the tasks within it. Uh, we're only so far one task done in our permits and authorizations. Um, I want to reorder this. I guess the externals always go down below. The timesheet just showed me all the time that's been logged against the project. And I also, uh, I can link this to Zoho Books. We can uh, invoice against it. We can also expense. If I had to run to Home Depot and buy a screwdriver or something, um, I got I to gotta pick a client here. The reason that to do the financial stuff, you have to have a client that they can send an invoice to. And all I did was send a company. I did not add that, uh, that guy just because I was having trouble. I could, add, I could add AJ, get invited. But that's the expense tracker. 
So in the projects here, we have documents, we have tasks, we have time and materials. And to me, this is uh, everything you need to do to know to do for a project. And this is kind of how we work, by the way, or how I work. You know, everybody is an account or a person in my company. I create a project, I go to it, and I log my time. Uh, a couple things. Going back to projects here, all of my most recent projects will be up here in tabs. Uh, I've only got these two projects, right? So uh, it was the solar panel job. Huh? The other project was called what? Sorry, it was called solar panel. There it is. So I had these two projects. This one's blank. But there's a little area to the left of the projects here called home. And I just, this is um, everything rolled up to one view. So when I go to home, these are like all of my tasks for all projects and uh, all active projects, um, all of my issues. I've got one task here. Um, I've got some reports I can view here. This is my calendar, and it shows, you know, not just the task, but the project the task is on. I could have lots of things to be going on right now. And so this is not project specific. This is across the entire system. Um, there's also, for instance, uh, my timesheet. This shows all of my time, not just for the one project, for, for all my projects. So you might want to say, what did Fred do this week? Well, he worked on three different projects and 10 different tasks within those three projects. And here is his time. So this, again, this is uh, above the project level. Here's a list of all my projects. Zoho gave me this one here. They have a weird numbering system. You can customize that. I can change things here. I can, you know, put this guy in charge of this project. I can also, um, you know, say these are project statuses, so I can say this project's completed. Uh, generally, when a project is done, you want to get it off the list because over time, they they become 90% of all your projects. Um, you can also, when I'm on a project here, like this one, I can come over to the three dots and I can trash it. That's I don't know why they call it trash when usually Zoho says delete, but that will delete a project. You can get it back. Um, normally, even if it's completed, I don't want to see it anymore. So you move it to the archive. And again, you can get it back. But otherwise, it shows up on your list of projects as a completed project. Uh, and so there's some project settings in here, which is... Uh, how it's, the project is based on billable time. You can have different ways of doing it. Um, the project itself has some email addresses. Every project has kind of a weird email address. You can actually email a task to this email address, and it will create it. Uh, generally, it's unassigned and stuff like that. But so you don't have to let outsiders into your project. You could just say, you know what, if you uh, want to send a document to the project, send it in an email to this email address, and we'll have it. Um, so tasks are things that take time. Issues are kind of problems that need to be resolved. Um, there's a thing in here called bugs. It's mostly for software developers. You know, obviously, Zoho uses this tool to do their projects, and they they want to track their bugs. Um, so let me go back to chat and see if we have any more questions. Oh, we do. How does the client find the project? Um, when we add them, you know what, Sherry, uh, we're recording. I'm going to take that question offline when we stop recording. Can the documents be saved in work drive? Not yet, maybe, AJ. That's a good question. Uh, in the past, it was saved in something called Zoho Docs, but Zoho is moving away from Docs towards WorkDrive. I don't know if the new projects, um, if I can, uh, I believe if you put a, a document in WorkDrive, let's go to my solar panel project, documents, 
if I come over here and I, I want to load a file from the cloud, Zoho Work Drive is right here. So I can I can uh, point to a file in Work Drive. You have to be a little careful about that. The file is in Work Drive, and it's probably not shared unless you manually went out and shared it, whereas a file here can be shared to a client user if you allow them to do that. Um, but I can pick Work Drive, and I should have some files. Yeah. We made some files last week. There are no items here. Maybe we didn't. Well, there's a document there. I'll attach this document to the uh, project. So I'm bringing one in from WorkDrive. Uh, I believe it's just a pointer, though. Might be a copy. I should know that. There's our PDF. Other questions? If not, what is the max storage size in projects? Depends on how many users you have. And I'll, in projects, under data administration is storage. And so I'm using five megs, but I've got 100 gigs. This is a two-user demo system. So my experience, Zoho, is very generous with their space. Um, but you've also got those terabytes over in WorkDrive. If you fill it up, it's a good problem to have. Okay. I'm going to uh, stop recording.